Hey there, I'm Julie and today I'm really excited. to my wizards. Here is Salem and this is Merlin. And both are a bit afraid. We moved, we had a three hours drive by car. Um, yeah, that's always not the best thing to do with cats. <laughs> they survive. The other one I will cut for sure because it's a children's size and it's an, I don't know if you can already call it vintage, it's from 1999 IKEA and I think it will make a lovely sundress. Okay, ready for some sewing magic? Well, I am. Of course it took a bit longer than I expected, so summer is over now when I've finished my first summer project, but I will wear it anyway. So here you see the book I used for choosing the pattern. It's a book where you can have all kinds of different kind of prototypes that you can combine into other dresses. Mine you can see on the very first picture. Creating the pattern already started with a surprise. There are no numbers on the lines of the pattern, so I always had to count the lines to get my size. I traced it out with sandwich paper. After that, there was quite a long modifying process. I made a mock-up out of an old bed linen, and it was also the lining of the future dress. Here you can see that I modified the back panel it was way too big for me, so I reduced it that I kind of merged two pieces into one a little bit wider piece. I wanted to do two darts in each piece in the back and yeah, later I changed it to one dart, but I wanted to show you this neat trick with mass and so I just kept it in the video. Then there was a lot of pinning and sewing and pinning and sewing and cutting and altering and m modifying and then the end I had a working mock-up for me. I used this as a template to create the pattern out of the other fabric. Then I sewed both layers together and created a strip of fabric to put on, on top of the dress to hold it. Then the top part of the dress was done. For the bottom part I decided to just use a rectangular shape and ruffle it. Therefore I used a running stitch and gathered it. Here you can see that I attached the front and also the front part of the pockets to the dress. I was quite pleased with the result so far. Well, and then it stopped. I was procrastinating with designing hoodies. Fitting to the second design that you see here, I reached 42 subscribers. Yay! Now I really wanted to have this dress done and after my sewing machine, well one of my sewing machines wasn't behaving, I decided to sew the rest by hand.
Hey there, just because it's fun. I, I'm Lady Liberty now. <laughs> I'm really excited now. Sorry, um, my voice is pitching. I just wanted to get Lady Bernina to repair, because this is the machine I'm usually so on. And then I, I just wanted to pack it in the normal box where, where she, she came, it's kind of a suitcase. And then I heard a, a bit of a... I don't know to say this in English, like a clappern. <laughs> I, I will put it down. And a rattling noise, maybe. And then I found out that there was also a box. Right, I show you. So, uh, I mean, there is this thing in the back. And I realize now that because it's in the back of the machine that there, there are um, drawers. And in these drawers, not only that there are 10 sewing feet or something for all fancy stuff, uh, in one of these boxes there was also oil. And while moving the machine around, I already realized that it's now, it's going easier now. I will show you the machine. I have to apologize for the huge mess. <laughs> But, I mean, you don't have to sew here. Here, just watch. Here. I wanted to bring them to repair because it was really hard to move the hand wheel. And now, because I kind of <laughs> grabbed the machine and pushed it, I guess it already solved some of the issues because now it's getting really easier now. The thing is that how to say this, there's still a, a, a strange noise, I mean like like a cat scratching on the door. <laughs> so I think this noise shouldn't be there. So now I'm looking for the manual, I know that I had it digitally. I know also that I printed it out, but I have no clue where. So I will look in the digital version where to put the oil, then I will oil it, and maybe then Lady Bernina is happy again. And I'm happy too then. <laughs> yes, and in the instructions they say that there are red dots everywhere you have to put oil. And I was really laughing because those Swiss people can be really strict. And yes, it was working. And so here you see the finished dress kind of. I added the pockets and I also added the back panels. There's only the zipper missing. Because I cannot do invisible zippers, I did a very visible zipper in gold. I sandwiched the zipper in between the two layers of the top. And then I opened the zipper a bit and sewed the first part. And then I closed it and did the rest. Unfortunately, I couldn't catch the inside of the dress, but I will sew it by hand. One issue I have with the shape of the dress is that it's going a bit too high under the arm. So the next time I would curve it there. And the other thing you cannot see here properly because I'm, I'm wearing a nude bra. I cannot put it any way further down because then you see the bra. Well, after sewing on the straps, the foot of my sewing machine fell off. Okay, I just went to a place where I wanted to do a shooting and there were people there. <sighs> what happened to stay at home? Yeah, so now I'm in another place and they chopped the grass. It has been such a nice meadow. I'm kind of a battle against the clock. I will try.
inspiration hit me and it really hit me hard. On 1st of September I've seen a really well done video of Meme Mom. I'm always watching a lot of YouTube videos where she talked about the strawberry dress and I wasn't knowing the strawberry dress before. Yeah, I was just like, mm, okay, nice dress, but it wasn't that I, I had any aim to, to reproduce it or something. It was just like, you know, watching it. And then I saw the video of Lady Rebecca Fashion about the historic Halloween um, thing. <laughs> I mean, the, the fancy dress challenge where you make some old Halloween costumes. I already thought that would be really cool to do such a thing. I wasn't really sure if, if that's too much work for me right now, and, but I really would love to do such a thing. I fell in love with the night theme there because it would be quite fitting for me, like wizards and somehow always I connect wizards with dark blue and stars. <laughs> it's maybe a bit of a cliche wizard. So I was planning to, to make a dress Someone. But then I, after I have seen this video, it was like, mm, oh, it's too bad that it's now too complicated to make a historic Halloween costume because yeah, I have to get patterns and stuff. I don't have anything about this. And then I was seeing the video of Rachel Maxi. Well, honestly, I wasn't even seeing the video. I just woke up and got the notification and saw the image. And then inspiration hit me like really hard. It really clicked in my head. I said, okay, I will do the strawberry dress, but as a star dress. And then I, I just realized that I have all materials at home. So it was really like a sign to do this stuff. So right now I have two vintage fancy dresses in my washing machine. Maybe they will start as a base, but my main material will be a mosquito net I found in the Swift store a while ago, dark blue with plastic stars and moons on it. But I know that tulle isn't the best thing to work with. I have made one petticoat and it was <sighs> annoying. So I know I will curse this <laughs> project, but now I'm kind of stuck in it. I mean, it's like I cannot get out anymore, so I, I have to do it now. And yeah, so we'll see. Thank you. 